This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. I am so thrilled to welcome my guest, a ferret named Seamus. Seamus, welcome to my what is that smell? Oh my, that is potent. Seamus, do you happen to know anything about that smell? Oh, I have an email. Dear Rhea, what is that smell? Are you trying to... Look, I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Oh, what was that, Seamus? Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Dear listeners, Seamus has just informed me he will be taking his annual bath tomorrow. And that sometimes, by the end of the year, he... Well, he stinks. The lesson I'm learning here is I really should have booked Seamus for next week. You know what? I just thought of something fun. Seamus, I know you have very good hearing. I mean, truly superb hearing. So I was thinking, wouldn't it be interesting to demonstrate your unparalleled sense of hearing? How about you take a few steps that way? Great. Okay, how about three more steps? Maybe four and a half more steps? There you go. Just five more steps should do it. Great! That's perfect. What's that? Oh, yeah, I know. You're not in the studio anymore. That's the fun part. Your sense of hearing is so good. You'll be able to hear the story through the door. Yeah, it'll be great. I'm sure of it. Alrighty, I'm just going to... There we go. Let's get to our story. It's called Little Hedgehog's New Year 2023. Take it away, Barrett. Remember, there are no pictures. You have to imagine them in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Let's go. It was the very end of the night. The moon was new and therefore invisible. The sky was a velvety blanket of darkness, with thousands of stars thrust center stage now that the moon was not competing for attention. Owls hooted in the night, seeming to ask when the moon would return. Down in Little Hedgehog's burrow, In the middle of the forest, Little Hedgehog was snoring. Her dad was snoring in the other room. Bebe, her best friend of all time, was sleep-talking. This dandelion pie could use a touch of vanilla, but it is otherwise delectable. Thank you. Little Hedgehog's eyes blinked open and grew wide. She burst from her bed and scampered to her friend. Dandelion pies were first made accidentally by Hedgy Wilson Phillips after she dropped a pawful of dandelion stems into Little Hedgehog giggled. In her amusement, she accidentally bumped into the Tower of Books she and Bibi had used as a ladder in order to communicate with a spider on Little Hedgehog's ceiling earlier in the night. The books came crashing to the ground. Bibi sat up in bed, shouting, Pie! while at the same time knocking Little Hedgehog across the room. Aye! Uh-oh. Bibi scampered over. Little Hedgehog, are you injured? Should I apply pressure to a wound? Little Hedgehog leapt from the ground. I'm fantastic, Bibi. Bibi smiled. Bibi, you were talking in your sleep. Please tell me what I said. My mom says Truman, my third cousin once removed, invented several things in his sleep, including an automatic prickle trimmer. 
Hmm, sounds risky, BB. I don't think you invented anything, but you were talking about dandelion pies. That bodes well for today. That reminds me, little hedgehog. Let me go get something really quick. BB slipped into the shadows. Mr. Hedgehog poked his head in the room, yawning. <sighs> A light pounding <sighs> sound above the burrow gradually grew louder. Is that a hailstorm? Oh, I should have put away my... That sound is not hail, Mr. Hedgehog. BB interrupted, emerging from the shadows, holding a tiny scroll of parchment. BB, oh, I did not know you were there. Mr. Hedgehog clutched his chest and panted. Oh, I really need to get more lighting in this room. Apologies, Mr. Hedgehog. I was retrieving this itinerary from the shadows, and that burgeoning sound you hear above us is not hail. Mr. Hedgehog glanced upward, trying and failing to remember what day it was, his mind still fuzzy from being awakened by the clatter of a pile of books. It is hedgehogs. It is hedgehogs. Mr. Hedgehog put a paw to his forehead. That's right. It was the pitter-patter of hedgehogs traversing the forest, heading towards the site of the annual New Year's noon festivities. Within minutes, after having a quick snack of crickets, yum! Yum. These are pretty good. The three of them set out towards the celebration. Dad, we have to go quick. I need to be in place for the pig race. The pig race? Oh, Dad, don't you remember what you said last New Year's noon? Mm, that was a whole year ago. Mr. Hedgehog, allow me to refresh your memory. Last year, at the start of the pig race, little Hedgehog said, Dad, can I ride on a pig? Can I? Can I? That is my little hedgehog voice. Little Hedgehog giggled. And then, Mr. Hedgehog, you said, maybe next year... Wow, BB, you sounded just like my dad. I thought it was him talking. Thank you. I've been practicing a lot lately, mostly on Wednesdays. Mr. Hedgehog peered at BB, but said nothing. Dad, you said maybe next year, and now it is next year. Yay! Yay. Dad sighed. If this is true, which I have no way of verifying, it's not like we have a recording of it, if this is true, I said maybe. Maybe is not definitely. Maybe is not yes. Little Hedgehog blinked. Then she and Bibi grinned. <sighs> we'll see, Dad said with a smile. Let's get going. Little Hedgehog and Bibi clapped their teensy paws together and continued trekking through the woods. Welcome, guests. Please be advised, there was a minor mishap involving a truck filled with dandelion pies on field number 17. We've already had a number of slips by small hedgehogs. Please watch your step as you scamper through field 17. Little Hedgehog and BB looked at one another and frowned as they stood amongst throngs of hedgehogs, listening to the announcer who stood on the main stage before a towering microphone. This year we have several new events. <sighs> Excuse me. We have several new events to which I'd like to direct your focus. The dandelion pie eating contest has been taken off the day's schedule due to the aforementioned incident. Again, please watch your paw step on field number 17. At 8.32, a brand new event, the cat race will take place on the far side of the big hill. The cat race will replace the pig race on our schedule due to some last minute uh, considerations. Little Hedgehog and BB blinked. Sorry, you two, Dad murmured. All cat riders should be in their saddles by 8.23 sharp. Well, I guess you can't do the... BB, I'm gonna ride a cat! Sounds thrilling. Whoa. Huh? You heard the announcements, Dad. The pig race has been replaced with the cat race. 
She is going to ride a cat. I'm going to ride a cat. How do you even ride a cat? I don't think that's going to work. Oh, Dad. At precisely 8.23 a.m., Little Hedgehog was perched on a saddle strapped to a very startled cat. The cat writhed in discomfort, its eyes wide with panic. Little Hedgehog, these cats don't exactly seem happy about this. They're just doing their stretches, Dad. Perhaps the cats will settle down once they feel the competitive spirit. Dad furrowed his brow. I guess we'll find out. The tiny hedgehog announcer was now perched in a tree overlooking the far side of the big hill. Welcome everyone to our inaugural cat race. Before we begin, I'd like to give a special thank you to the owner of the cats you see before you, Ms. Juniper Hedgehog. Please give a warm welcome to Ms. Juniper. Oh, thank you. You're too kind. Dad. Did you hear that? Ms. Juniper Hedgehog owns all of these cats. Every single one of these 27 cats belongs to one hedgehog, Mr. Hedgehog. Yep, I did catch that. Riders, assume your positions. There we are. Little Hedgehog, good luck with your cat. Thanks, Phoebe. Good luck, Little Hedgehog. Dad and Bibi made their way to the spectator area. Little Hedgehog's cat seemed to calm slightly, accepting the small creature on its back. An agitated hedgehog wearing a corduroy vest stood near Mr. Hedgehog and Bibi, muttering to himself, This will be an unmitigated disaster. I wrote letters, sent three messenger crows. Did anyone listen to me? Cats do not race. I shall be proven correct. They will rue the day they failed to listen to me. Mr. Hedgehog and BB exchanged a look, but said nothing. Cats and riders, the race will begin with a starting bell. Listen for the starting bell. Ding, ding, And they're off. Ding, ding. But the cats did not seem to know they were part of a race. None of them moved. Uh, let's ring that bell again, shall we? Again, none of the cats moved forward. Some sat. One of them laid down and began stretching itself into the grass, and its hedgehog rider disappeared beneath a mountain of fur. Help! This shan't be the end of me. I beg of you, I have so much more to give. Bibi and a few other observant spectators dashed over to rescue the squished hedgehog. Thank you. I shall strongly consider naming my firstborn hedgehog after you, he said, addressing Bibi. Ms. Juniper Hedgehog began prodding the cats with a paw, and eventually they did begin to move. They began to wander in all directions. Little Hedgehog's cat, as well as a number of others, leapt into nearby trees. Whoa! Oh dear, this is not going as planned. The fire department arrived. Hedgehogs of all ages looked on as cats and their hedgehog riders were removed from trees. It was still rather dark, so it was difficult to see the cats. The firefighters had to rely on the cat's meows and the yelps of the hedgehogs in order to locate them. The hedgehog in the corduroy vest was beside himself. And did anyone listen to my repeated warnings? They shall rue the day they failed to listen. They will come to me apologizing for... Well, this was unpredictable, the announcer said. Mr. Hedgehog and BB met Little Hedgehog at the foot of an elm tree once she'd been retrieved by the fire department. You okay? Little Hedgehog, are you unharmed? Little Hedgehog giggled. I'm fine. It was actually kind of fun. And BB, from up in the tree, I saw there's a guess the prickles booth. We have to go. Indubitably. Next on the schedule was the annual sing-a-thon. It was slightly different than usual because half of the participants 
had come down with laryngitis. Bibi, it's so whispery this year. Quite. The selfless snakes had been on the schedule for a second year, but were replaced after a letter-writing campaign by the area gnats. Instead, there was a rousing performance by opera-singing sheep. After the concert, Little Hedgehog and BB stopped at the Guess the Prickles booth, at which contestants had to guess the number of prickles on the large hedgehog seated on a raised platform. A smaller hedgehog wearing a pinstripe suit shouted to passersby, Step right up and guess the prickles! The hedgehog hit a button on a tiny music player. Guess! The prickles, guess, guess the prickles. How many do you see? Is it one? Is it two? Is it three thousand three? How many prickles do you see? Who could possibly get that right? Mr. Hedgehog muttered. Hello, 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 said the hedgehog in the pinstripe suit. He gestured at BB. Hello there, you look like you have a guess. Step right up, you can take a look at Fred here and give us your guess. This is Guess the Prickles. BB scampered over and studied Fred, who sat there looking rather bored. BB peered at him in the early morning light for several seconds, then said, 4,423. For a moment, the hedgehog in the pinstriped suit just stared. He was clearly shaken. Well, uh, this is a first. Uh, we have a winner. That was correct. Exactly correct. How did you do that? How did you do that, BB? Little hedgehog asked as they all walked away, BB trudging along holding an enormous stuffed shark. Yeah, I don't understand what just happened, Dad said. My mom says the hedgehogs in my family all share my ability. My great-aunt Latunia once answered correctly the question of how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Oh, okay. Uh Uh-huh. Little Hedgehog, BB, and Mr. Hedgehog made their way through the crowd stopping now and then at different attractions. There was a juggler on stilts tossing tiny mice wearing helmets who squeaked and giggled as they flew in broad arcs. Then they stopped at a cricket biscuit stand as they ate their biscuits. These are really good. Delicious. Cricket biscuits are my favorite. They watched the sun come up. The sky was streaked pink and the crowd of hedgehogs, many of whom rarely stayed up late enough to see the sunrise, stopped their bustling and watched. Little Hedgehog and BB yawned. A few hours later, it was time for the annual hedgehog roll. All rollers should now make their way to the big hill. And please be advised, we're still missing three cats and corresponding hedgehog riders. If anyone has any information on these missing creatures, please visit booth number 33. Little Hedgehog, Bibi, and Mr. Hedgehog found a spot on the big hill. They were surrounded by hundreds of other hedgehogs, all preparing themselves for the day's most anticipated event. Some were stretching. Some were doing last-minute weightlifting. Others were doing deep breathing exercises. And a few were accompanied by tough-looking trainers who wore muscle t-shirts over their prickles. Remember your training. Just remember your training. Hearing that sparked Little Hedgehog's memory of her own training. Dad, remember that free session I had with a tough trainer three months ago? Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. 
All right, all right, everybody. Thanks for coming to this free tough training session. If you like what you get here, you can buy a tough training package. We'll talk more about it at the end. All right, all right. The tough trainer went from hedgehog to hedgehog, giving personalized feedback and advice. All right, all right, you kid. You make sure you've got your knees up when you do that move, all right? Yes, sir. He stopped in front of BB and squinted. You've just been standing here the whole time, haven't you? I am attending purely as an observer and to accompany my friend, BB said, gesturing at Little Hedgehog. My mom says our family does not have the rolling gene. The tough trainer raised his brow, shook his head, and moved on to Little Hedgehog. She was doing her stretches. Oomph! He peered at her for a moment, appearing to do some quick calculations. Look, uh, here's my advice for you, okay? What was it, little, uh, hedge? Little hedgehog. Yeah, okay, little hedgehog. Look, kid, uh, all I want you to do is, uh, don't get distracted by shiny objects. That's it. Can you do that? When you go to the hedgehog roll in a few months, just don't get distracted by shiny objects. Little Hedgehog and BB exchanged a look. Okay, I can do that. The tough trainer moved on to the next hedgehog. Good form. You've got real potential, kid. Make sure you vault above your competitors. There you go. And he said, don't get distracted by shiny objects, kid. <laughs> That's my tough trainer voice, Dad. Okay. Rollers, take your positions. It's time for the annual hedgehog roll to commence. It was nearly noon. Little Hedgehog and BB clapped their teensy paws together. Yay! Yay! Then BB and Mr. Hedgehog wished Little Hedgehog good luck and headed off to the spectator area. Little Hedgehog took her place just as the countdown to New Year's Noon began. Ten, nine, All of the hedgehogs started curling themselves into balls. Little Hedgehog focused on the advice from her tough trainer. Don't get distracted by shiny objects. Three, two, one. And they were off. Dozens of hedgehogs tumbled down the hill, giving the appearance of a wave of prickles flowing downward in the sun. Some of the toughest hedgehogs, having vaulted themselves high above the crowd, were already at the bottom. Others dribbled down the hill unconcerned. The disgruntled hedgehog in the corduroy vest went sailing past Little Hedgehog, shouting, Mark my words, they will rue the day. Little Hedgehog giggled as she rolled. Then, out of nowhere, halfway down the big hill, she heard a tiny yelp beneath her. Yelp. She stopped rolling and saw that she had squished a worm. It was a delightful worm. He was wearing a satin suit and a tiny top hat. Hello. I'm so sorry I squished you. You did rumple my suit, but I suppose I will forgive it. Little Hedgehog was quite taken with this worm. She forgot about why she was on the hill and focused on her new friend. You look so fancy. Are you on the way to somewhere special? I am, in fact. We worms have a New Year's Noon celebration, too. It's not just you hedgehogs. There are other creatures, you know, the worm said solemnly. That is fascinating. As Little Hedgehog continued her conversation with the fascinating worm, Actually, I rented this suit. I have to say it's rather scratchy. BB and Mr. Hedgehog wandered over, noticing she hadn't moved in quite some time. The rest of the hill had nearly emptied of hedgehogs. Little Hedgehog, did you twist your ankle again? Dad asked, thinking back to last year's New Year's Noon. Do you require a splint, Little Hedgehog? Even better! I made a new friend! Little Hedgehog moved so they could see the worm. 
That is a very fancy worm. Dad couldn't help but chuckle. <laughs> Little hedgehog. Yes, Dad. Didn't your trainer tell you not to get distracted by shiny objects? Dad said, glancing at the formally dressed worm. Little hedgehog, BB, and the worm exchanged a look. Oh, Dad, worms are not shiny. Worms are rarely shiny, Mr. Hedgehog, as they do not bathe. I am usually quite dusty, the worm said with a tone of defiance. Dad just smiled. It was a beautiful day. Cold, but sunny. Little Hedgehog and BB said their goodbyes to the worm. Happy New Year's Noon! Happy New Year's Noon. They all headed home. On the way through the sunlit forest, with marshmallow clouds up above, Little Hedgehog remembered something. BB, I was so distracted by the dusty worm that I forgot to collect anything today. Fear not, I have assembled a collection for you. Little Hedgehog's eyes went wide. Did you collect memories, BB? Too cheesy. Did you collect cheese? There was no cheese this year. What did you collect, BB? I have to know. <sighs> Immediately. Remember when you were stuck in a tree by a wandering cat? Yes! While you were busy readying yourself for the hedgehog role, I returned to that tree, ascended its branches with my climbing skills honed from weeks in the wilderness, and collected leaves from that tree. BB! My plan is to press them between two heavy books so that they may be dried and preserved for years to come. I love your plan. Dad put a paw around Little Hedgehog and, after considering it for a moment, put another paw around BB. She grinned. They all scampered home, marveling at the beauty of the daytime forest on the first day of the new year. All right, I'm just going to hold my breath and let Seamus in for a minute to hear what he thought of the story. Okay, here we go. Hey, Seamus, sure, come on in. What did you think of the story? Oh, yeah? Oh, that that's wonderful to hear. Glad you enjoyed that part. Uh-huh, well... Yes, I probably could have fleshed that out more. Yep, okay, well, um, thank you so much for coming. Yes, I will definitely say hello to him for you, no problem. Mm-hmm, yes, you're welcome to come back a year and a week from now. Okay, see ya. Oh, that was, that was intense. Sorry, just need a minute. Okay, wow, that smell is gonna linger, people. Remember, I'm doing all of this for you. Well, I hope you loved this story. And that's all I've got. I gotta get out of here and air out my studio. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. My in-house tech director, Peter K., runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Thank you to Barrett for contributing the super important reminder message at the beginning. And thank you to the many listeners who provided sound effects for this story. Thank you to Isabella, Makama, Vati, AJ, Oliver, Vivian, Chloe, Beatrice, Elowin, Kira, Isabel, Sarah, Michelle, Annika, Carla, Cordelia, Caroline, Emily, Magnolia, Quincy, Calliope, Copen, Maceo, Emma, Julia, Ivy, Fiona, Eloise, and Lottie. Those sounds came from my Little Stories premium subscribers. They are making it possible for me to continue creating stories for children around the world. You can become a premium subscriber to hear more stories and to get an ad-free listening experience. Find the link in the episode description or visit littlestoriespremium.com. 
and thank you, as always, for listening in.